Hello. So we are back and I remembered to set the audio correct. So <laughs> um, were there any more questions while we were waiting? Well, um, I will quickly mention there were a few questions about various, like for example, the essay interactive and the Slurm comments. So these are like helper scripts that we have created. They are available in GitHub if you are interested. Uh, you can you can ask your uh, admins to set them up, or you can set them up yourself if you want to. But there's alternatives that they're basically just wrappers for the Slurm commands. So there's yeah. alternatives provided in the notes uh, if you don't have those at your site. Yeah. Okay. So off to the section on serial jobs and I sent it to Simo screen. Yes. Okay. So yeah, um, a serial or batch job, what does it mean? So I guess I gave the metaphor that you don't have to sit there and wait for it. So how does that go? Yeah, so like if you think about like what you are doing with your computer, like usually, of course, there's a lot of like coding that you do interactively, like you do, uh, you do like you code your code and then you do some modifications. Like maybe you use like a notebook interface or something like that, and then you mm -hmm. uh, constantly run each individual cell in the notebook, and you might do that most of your job like that. But when it comes to the tasks that are actually like heavy or computationally, that might take for hours to run, that you might need the HPC resources, like the cluster resources for, uh, you don't usually want to be there watching at it, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's waste of mm -hmm. your time mm -hmm. to, <laughs> to basically watch at that. Yeah. And so, then you can uh, only do one thing at a time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like like you so, don't usually want you want to usually like offload that to something else. So yeah. basically, you want to like what Richard said about the table reservation. You want to well, okay. You you basically order like takeout, <laughs> like you 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 order that the meal be pre prepared, and once it's prepared, let me know so that I can fetch it and and just mm. like eat the result. So you. It's, it's prepared for you on the background, so you don't have to like worry about it. You don't have to wait mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. So, um, and we do this via the batch script. So can you go over what's, or it's so like, what's the general idea here? So we tell the cluster mm. what we want. And yes, we do that by, I guess, this batch script that we're showing here. So can you go yes. over what these lines mean? Yeah. So so in the batch script, like like we have an example batch script over here uh, that you can look at. And over there, we have various strange looking lines. But these lines basically tell, uh, tell the queue manager, the Slurm, what it should do, uh, like what it, what it should do for you on the background. So, so the first line over here, the this line is mm -hmm. is this so-called chi bang line, which uh, which tells uh, which like interpreter, which tool we should use to uh, interpret the script, or which program we should use to run the script. Usually, uh, commonly, it's the shell, so so the bash shell or some other like terminal. So that it would be basically like, okay, execute these commands. Mm -hmm. Like, like previously when we used the, uh, we used the, uh, we just ran the Python three, for example, uh, and then we ran the Py example. Mm -hmm. Then we uh, we just called commands from the command line. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. basically, this would mean that okay, just use the command line to run these commands. The mm -hmm. next uh, two lines are are directives to the queue system. So when we when we want to the queue to manage this script, we 
we want it to get us the resources what we want. And how do we tell it? We usually give these like comments in the script, these SBATS directives. And this is like a uh this is like a format that is very like like you need to write it in this format. So it's not S bash or S batch yeah. with a space. So it's it's written like this. Exactly so like it's, that. Yeah. Because the like the slurm, when it takes this script, it will look for these comments. And if it sees these comments, then it will interpret the what what comes after the comment as an argument for the for the queue manager, basically. Like like, okay, I want this time, I want this memory for this job. And afterwards, you can have uh, whatever your code is after that, like whatever commands you want the code to run, like the mm -hmm. uh, queue manager to run. And what happens is that when we call this S batch and then the script uh, that we have written, mm -hmm. we call it, we basically say we are in the login node. We have our terminal or whatever. We have it on the login node. And when we call that command, the queue manager takes that file mm -hmm. and then it will like read the comments that, okay, I will. Okay. Yeah. I, I know that this, this, uh, script needs these resources mm -hmm. and it will find you the correct place on the compute node in the CPU mm -hmm. node where, uh, it can execute that, that has yeah. those resources. And then it will just plow, plow through it. Mm -hmm. It will mm -hmm. just run the the commands so and it will like done it non-interactively so once you give the queue manager the script you don't have to like you you can just like go do something else and the queue manager will uh, run it for you somewhere yeah. in the background yeah there was a good comment in one of the previous notes questions if you log out is all your stuff saved so i guess the synchronization here is everything starts as a file and everything comes out as a file. So your program, like if it writes something, like if it prints something to the screen, where does that go? Yeah, so if you would run um, in an interactive session, for example, the, the Python code that we previously run, it just printed it out there. So it, it's basically like ephemeral. So it, it just disappears once you close the terminal because it's just like output. But if we run it non non interactively mm -hmm. then slurm will gather whatever output your code will write like whatever text output it will print mm -hmm. and it will collect that into a file of course in many cases you would want your code to uh, like let's say read input files in the code and then write maybe some output file mm -hmm. and so basically like what ha what happened during the computation is stored in those files but if you want to yeah. like record the the printed output of your code, it will be recorded by Slurm. Mm -hmm. Should okay. we yeah. uh, run like a simple example on this? Yeah, sure. Let's go. So if we scroll down a bit under your fridge job script, I guess we can do the full demo. So the starting point is at the shell like we've had before, and we need to make a new file. So I guess Simo will use the nano editor to open a file and make it, but you can use any editor you're comfortable with, whether it's VS Code with the remote SSH or through Jupyter or some other command line thing. So Simo's open the file and we'll paste all the contents yeah. in there. I'll make it a bit bigger so that it doesn't look so... Okay, so we pasted it here, and I guess we know oh. what these things mean. Time, memory, output is where it writes the output. Save. Yeah, and uh, control X to to save and mm -hmm. yes to mm -hmm. uh, save it into a file name. Right, yeah. If you are using nano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then so we do sbatch. So s batch and run pi, and if we push enter, so we see job submit automatically setting partitions submitted batch job. So we have a job ID. Uh, if we do slurm history, what do we see or slurm queue? I guess. 
well, it already ran. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we should add some okay. sleep there or something. Uh, let's yeah. let's do that actually. Let's just uh, just for the demo. Let's just uh, let's yeah. add a bit of a sleep here. So you can use this command sleep uh, to add. Let's okay. say let's say add ten seconds so that we can capture the output. So I will uh, submit it again, uh, but this time I will run slurm view. And you can see yeah. it, it's now running there. Make it a bit smaller yeah. so that mm -hmm. all output fits. Yeah. And now uh in the script itself, if we look at uh if we look at the script again over here, we had this S batch output. Right. Yeah. Like Slurm has various so, flags. There's like a huge reference. So there's one in our page, but there's also the Slurm's own reference. There's lots of different parameters you can give it. And this output is basically, if we want to name the output in a certain way, uh, we can do that. Yeah, OK. Um, and can we see the output? If we do ls, yes. do we see things here? Yeah, let's do them. So we see day two dot out, pi dot out. Yes, so yeah. that's the example. Um, and if we use do we the do cat, cat or less, I guess we can show cat first. Yeah. So cat is first off the thing that comes and visits me sometimes, but also it's the Unix program that it's short for concatenate. So it basically writes out what's in the file, and we see mm, there's an error. No. Oh. Slurm. Yeah, I'm in the wrong folder. That's the uh -huh. reason. Yeah. Okay. So let's move it. Let's let's move the run pi to HPC examples. Yes. And now let's try it again. Okay. So I guess this is a common real life thing. You make a job, you submit it, and then mm. you see ah, oh, there's something wrong. And you adjust mm. it and submit again. It happens. I mean Yes. It's solely iterative. This is often why we start with interactive jobs, just to see quickly, yeah. does it even run at all, and then write the yeah. commands in there. The Slurm Q is a shorthand for Slurm Q, but okay. uh, you can use either one if you use the Slurm command. OK, yeah. now we probably have the pi dot out up here. Yeah, yes. OK. So we have pi dot out, and yeah. And if you look at the script, that's exactly what it should do. Echo, hello user, yeah. hello, Thomas yeah. S1, you're there. So, yeah. so this line, uh, which might look, if you are not familiar with uh, bash shell scripting, might look a bit complicated. But mm -hmm. but basically, this we often use this bash or these terminal languages because you can do a lot of like housekeeping work with the terminal. Like you can move folders around, you can rename yeah. files, you can do whatever stuff uh, in the, like, and you can programmatically do those. Like instead of like drag and dropping files in your file browser, you can do it in a systematic programmatic way. So that's why we often use the terminal and, and why it's a powerful tool mm -hmm. when you're writing these things. So uh, over here we are using certain like we always get these mm -hmm. parameters called or these variables called user and host name yeah. that tell what is our username and where are we yeah. executing this script. And then yeah. we hear a call a func call a yeah. program date to get the current date. Yeah. So that's the output over here. And you notice that it's not in the script, it's like these variables. But they are only filled when the script is run. So they are filled when we are running it in the compute node. So so we actually did run it in the in the compute yeah. node. Yes. Um should we go to a actually we have a bit of time. There's a really good question in the notes. Um mm -hmm. If you take the script and you submit it with bash, the shell, instead of sbatch, it will look like it runs, but it's not mm. taking these resource yes. requests and it's not yeah, running let's... on the other thing. Yeah. 
we can demonstrate this. So, so this is something you shouldn't do. Like, it's unfortunate that the S batch and bash sound so similar. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's an unfortunate thing. But if we, uh, like, Lee, you, you remember I mentioned about how this is going to be filled mm -hmm. when when it's going to be running. So now if we run it with bash, like what we expect to happen, uh, bash is the terminal or the terminal emulator or the the, the interpreter for the for the code language mm -hmm. that we have written here. So we expect that it fills these according to where we are currently running. So because we are running it on the login node currently, our current uh, host name uh, is login node. If we run it yeah. with bash, we expect those to be filled mm -hmm. uh, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, uh, like, yeah, they're filled with the wrong wrong things. So if we now run it, mm -hmm. you notice yeah. that we are on the login node, and and we had this strange thing happening where we have job queued and waiting for resources, and then job has been allocated to resources. So what happened is that basically we wrote these commands out. So if if we would have written these commands into the into the terminal itself, we would get the same output. So so if we run it with bash, so don't run it with bash. That's a different thing. Like like if we use it with s batch, we give it to the Slurm manager that runs it only when there's the correct space and time to run it in the correct computer to run it. Yeah. And and that that way we can make certain that it runs on the correct place. Uh, yeah. You might also be wondering why do we have S run over here? Like uh, why yeah why do we have S run in the script? That mm -hmm. uh, like why is it there? And the reason for that is that in some cases, uh, especially if you're using like these MPI jobs that are like uh, parallel parallel jobs, uh, you might want to call S run so that the Slurm uh, manager can can allocate these jobs correctly uh, with the MPI jobs, but mm -hmm. also if you are using this S run, you will get like extra information to the history. So if I look at the Slurm history, uh, when I let's first let's first run the run okay. it one once more, yeah, so that we can get run like the properly. we can just mm -hmm. yeah. We run it properly with S batch, and if we look at the Slurm history uh, afterwards, let's see if that did it already finish. Yes, uh, we note we can notice here that the um, I'll have to make it a bit smaller, it. I guess. You can also have it run off the edge of your screen. Yeah. Yeah. There. So okay. Yeah. So we notice here that. The, the the last job that we run mm -hmm. we see these uh batch extern and zero so what this batch means is that all the commands that we didn't have s run on top of them what did they run so basically all of this okay. stuff how much resources it used and and then how much resources did the s run call do yeah so we can mm -hmm. get like more up to date, like resource users information for each individual part of our code. Yeah, uh, and you can do also kinds of fancy stuff for that. But the S run is optional in the S batch script. But you, if you want to get more like yeah. this kind of gradual uh, uh, resource so, information, you can use that. So if you have a script and you're running, say, three different steps with different memory and CPU requirements, you can understand yes. them separately and yes. we'll learn more about this in the next next lesson about monitoring jobs mm. but i think okay. uh yeah what what we probably want to do is uh is do more exercises so you can yeah. learn how to write these scripts yourself yeah. because this is like the like the really the meat and potatoes of the like the whole thing like when we go into parallel jobs and everything, like the power of the cluster comes from the ability of it doing work for you while you are just doing something else. And for that, you need to be able to do it, tell it that uh, 
that they are like, do this for me. And how do you do it? You write these uh, scripts that you execute uh, in so that you don't have to like watch what's happening there. So so learning this is a very important skill and very useful. So so I highly recommend uh, find the exercises. Yeah. Um, OK, so should, should I propose we give a nice long time? Should we let it go on until after the break and return at, say, 10 minutes after the hour? Mm. Yeah, I will also like one thing we forgot to mention actually is that how do you cancel these jobs? Like once you have submitted a job, uh, you can also cancel them. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's say the I open the pie, uh, the run pie script, and I put here sleep like a long time, <laughs> and it's it's not going to finish and. And I submit this this script here. Uh, I can check the queue, and mm -hmm. you notice this job. Each job gets its own job ID, yeah. so that the Slurm can manage them. And once this is running, you can always like cancel. If you notice that the job is not going to finish correctly, or you made a mistake or something, you can always use s cancel and the job id to to cancel the job yeah so so right. that way yeah. when okay. you run the s cancel you the job will be gone it will just like kill the job what you yeah. have yeah so so basically if you look at the quick reference you can find all the common control mm. and monitoring monitoring things you need but yeah read the page there's a little bit more in there yeah uh okay so yeah i'd propose exercises until the hour and then break until 10 minutes past the hour all combined because what we're doing right now is sort of the most important lesson i'd say it combines mm -hmm. the shell the bat job the resource requirements and from here mm -hmm. it should get much smoother yeah, basically, like I said, like what we want to now learn is how can we utilize the resources in the computing cluster? Yeah, like there are lots of resources there, and this is the way. Like these are the this is the language that the queue manager understands. So we want to learn that language, but we can translate our mm -hmm. whatever we want to run to a language that the queue manager understands. Yeah, so that the queue manager can do it for us. Like yeah. Okay, great. So see you in, what, like 30 minutes? Okay, I guess that's all. Keep asking the questions and we'll keep reading and answering. Okay, bye. Bye. Hello, we are back. So, um, yeah, how was the exercise? I forgot to add the poll asking how it went. Um, there are some good questions here, including a lot which we're asking about using more resources. For example, more processors at the same time or running several things at once. Um, Yeah, we'll talk about parallel processing tomorrow. So parallel, different methods of parallel processing. But yeah. for now, like, yeah, the focus is, is on how to, like, basically focuses on making certain that your workflow is is in a way that you can easily then, like, like leave something for the queue system to manage. Like, basically, you, you can... Uh, yeah. write this kind of stuff that is the queue system does non-interactively so you don't have to worry yeah. about it but we're going to do some demos um of serial three and five i'll switch to simo screen here yeah so these are pretty uh 
helpful examples of showing like a couple of like interesting like like to like this kind of like uh think uh, gedanken experiment as as Einstein would put it like thinking experiments would make you think about okay what's really happening on the background so mm -hmm. so in this example uh the we try to demonstrate like basically what what happens if you start modifying something that is already submitted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's look at the uh the run pie that we have over here uh and as per the exercise let's add sleep 120 there uh well i remove this older one from here at the end and we put sleep 120 here so it it will sleep for two minutes maybe we can put it into one minute so that we don't have to wait that long <laughs> yeah or, okay so, so and then while we are while it, we have after we have submitted it let's open the script and let's add something to the slurm script so to this uh run pi script so i'll prepare myself and i will take this into clipboard already i'll save the script and i'll submit it so let's see i'll submit it and i'll edit it and i'll add here the line modified mm -hmm. and i'll say this okay and now we can use the slurm queue to check what's yeah. happening it's it's now so running it's still... in the queue so now it's mm. sleeping for a bit okay so what yeah. do we expect to happen richard so i guess it depends on if slurm is remembering if slurm already read the file and then runs it or if it just remembers where the file is no, actually, no, it's not queuing, it's running. I mean, I guess if it's running, mm. there's no way our modifications could have any effect because Python yeah. has already opened it. But but also, even if if it wouldn't be running, it wouldn't have any effect. Because like Slurm, when, it, when you give it the script, what the Slurm sees is that it sees the script, it will copy that script into its memory. Like you can even uh, later on, if you want, you can view the the script for the uh like what what it keeps in memory so basically once mm -hmm. you press s batch and the script slurm will remember the script and after that you okay. can no longer like modify that yeah. you have fired it away you have written the letter mm -hmm. and you have sent it to the post uh yeah and mm -hmm. and it's basically it's it's there going already yeah. you cannot modify it anymore so when we look at the output, the pi dot out, if we catenate it, we see that there's no like the, the co-modified line there. Okay. Yeah. Because Slurm already took the script. But so if we Yeah. What, so right what, what would happen if instead of modifying the script itself, we modified some of the other libraries or files it imported or ran? Yes. Let's do that exactly. So I'll I'll quickly just bigger so i'll remove this modified line over here save the file so now let's okay. submit the run.py uh but now it's basically the uh the exercise four let's modify the actual python script so let's do okay. that so i'll i'll yeah. take this uh already into the clipboard I'll s batch the run, run pi, mm -hmm. and now I will quickly edit the slurm pi dot pi. Now I'll add this over here. Okay. Yeah. And we can notice that the, it's now doing the sleep thing mm -hmm. over there. So, so yeah. what do we what what do we expect over here now? Like the slurm is running. It it has yeah. taken the S SH script that we have given it, yeah. but it will run through it line by line, mm -hmm. and because it's now stuck in the sleep line, it okay. hasn't yet yeah. reached the Python line. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but we have now modified the Python line, but the Python okay. isn't something that we gave to Slurm. It's something that Slurm will, when it executes the commands, mm -hmm. it will find from the 
disk. So it yeah. will find the file that we have modified. Mm -hmm. So usually it's uh, it's not recommended to modify either the Slurm script or the script that you are submitting because yeah. like you're now changing the state of the like system. <laughs> like like you're you're changing either like the script or the um or yeah, the code yeah. and now it will uh, mm -hmm. like give a, yeah. a different error. So you can see that if okay. I now uh print it out, uh, it will yeah, accept some... yeah. Okay. So. Not what we expected because it's something else, but still yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I guess the point of these exercises is basically once you submit a job, it's been recorded and what you do mm -hmm. may or may not have an effect on it, but it's better mm -hmm. to not, leave it not alone. modify them at all. You have to be very yeah. careful to understand what you submitted and what you're modifying and how it will affect mm -hmm. things. So so basically what, what usually is recommended that you would have, like let's say for your experiment, you would have an SPAT script and for the co corresponding to the SPAT script, you would have your code or your parameters or something. We'll talk about array jobs tomorrow. If you have a lot yeah. of parameters, you can do use these fancy things to yeah. to to uh, do lots of code mm -hmm. calls at one time. But yeah, like uh, that is usually uh, like you you want yeah. to have a script that is basically it it shows how you can replicate the results of your mm -hmm. uh, code. Like if you want to do a simulation or a run, uh, some some yeah. compilation or some code run, uh, you can replicate it by using the SPAT script. And you don't want to mess them up while they're running. OK, yeah. so yeah. So, mm, number five Good. now. Yeah, so so let's let's look at the uh, the third example. So let's create a Slurm script that runs this uh, following program that okay. that produces some output. So this ties up neatly to the next next section that uh -huh. we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, let's yeah. call it like monitor output of this yeah. age, and okay. I will quickly write the usual lines. Yeah, the usual magic words, I guess. Yeah. Once you have written enough of these, these like. These are pretty like self. Yeah. You you become uh, uh, familiar with those. Yes. So what we do here is that every thirty seconds we print date, and then we uh, sorry for thirty times we print uh, date, and then we sleep for ten seconds. Okay. Yeah. So this is basically pretending that you're running something and it's periodically outputting the status. Yes. OK. So let's submit it. And now yeah. let's, it's probably running. Uh, yep. Someone warns that you set the sh file as the output file. How did I? That's a good oh, that catch. Did. Yeah, that's a good catch. <laughs> OK, well then. I'm in trouble. Okay. I'm in danger, like as Ralph would say. Uh, so let's yeah. let's cancel this one and let's uh, do another recap. So, <laughs> yeah, this can happen. This can happen. Yeah. Like, like I like I said, like once you once you're familiar with these, uh, you can uh, you can write them really fast, but you can also write uh, like problems really fast. Yeah. Okay. OK, let's try it again. The repetition uh, makes yeah. <laughs> everything better. Yeah. So now monitor output got out. OK. Yes. And then let's go. Yeah. Yes. And let's try it again. Yeah. The view. OK, and it's going. Yeah. So now, yeah, now we can catenate the output. So monitor output dot out, not the yeah. SH. Okay. Ah, so there's some stuff running. Yeah. And so, yeah, so it's appearing. Yeah. So so this is like typical when you're running something like what we 
talked earlier, like interactivity and non-interactivity, like in many cases, there's a situation where do you really need to get the output like constantly? Like, do you really need to like watch it? Like, do I need, really need to watch this uh, like every second of like <laughs> of the output? Most likely yeah. not. Like, I'm just interested that it runs, it produces like yeah reasonable results, and then I can leave it running. Like, if I have a longer simulation yeah. or something, I can just leave it running, yeah. and I don't have to like look at it constantly. But yeah. of course, you want to view the output. So you can either like like do like here, like catenate the output. Mm -hmm. One other option is to use this tail if, and there's other tools as well, but this tail yeah. is like follow, follow the end of the file, basically, it says okay. here. And so, it keeps it open. So every time a new line appears, it yeah. automatically, okay, yeah. Okay, so if someone submits like a long training job or something, they can check the status this way. Yeah. I will also mention that for, for some cases, for example, with Python, like in many cases, yeah. like the output is buffered. So, so there's like, mm -hmm. once you reach a certain amount of output, it will flush the buffer into the file. So if your code produces very small amounts of output at the start of the mm -hmm. like run, it might seem that nothing is happening because it hasn't yet filled the buffer and and like there are various things that you can say to to make certain yeah. that like the buffers are flushed every now and then but but mm -hmm. like there are these certain situations where the output doesn't appear necessarily immediately yeah but i mean i'm yeah. actually kind of surprised it does appear so quickly here and doesn't mm -hmm. get buffered but anyway yeah, like should you we, so, yeah should yeah. we go on to the next one yeah let's um, and this is about monitoring, like what we yeah. already started to do. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm just adding the link to the notes. Um. Uh, there's a good question here. It's still about the. Here. Remember, there's a warning on some cluster never use tail f mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, it it might differ on the cluster. It's it's about like like whether the file system is is like how how it's syncing, yeah. like how the syncing is done, uh, yeah. like if if there is this kind of like a global lock or not. Yeah. And and in it might differ in some clusters. There there yeah. are then other tools to. Uh, like you view yeah. the output, but it like, like could it be if about your cluster says that don't use those, don't use those, just yeah. because I said to use those because <laughs> yeah, like yeah. buyer beware or yeah. something like that. Like, I mean, so at Alta, you should trust your all local admin uh, over yeah. me. So at Alta, we've invested signif significant resources in having a strong and performant file system. So whenever there is lots of stuff um like yeah so basically it can handle things like tail dash dash f yeah but but like it, it's it's probably a technical reason that like not not yeah. that other sites wouldn't have the file system capable of doing it it's probably like technical system yeah. regarding the mount and whatever but let's yeah. not go that far 